professional mm -hmm. saxophone for just over $2,000. Is that any good? Let's find out. And welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and if you're interested in saxophone masterclasses and product reviews, please do subscribe and be sure to hit the like button. Show your appreciation for hand engraving. Now today we're talking about the Jean-Paul TS-860 brand new release and their new line of professional saxophones. We're gonna do a full playing test, talk features, build quality, aesthetics, and of course, value for money. But first, a disclaimer and caveat. I did not purchase this instrument. It was sent to me for free by Jean Paul. They do have an affiliate sales program where some reviewers can get a cut of a commission for every instrument sold. I have declined the affiliate commission. So I feel this is a as unbiased review as I can give. Now, you may be wondering, why do I keep reviewing Jean Paul instruments? Well, the short answer is they keep sending them to me, which I like. The other reason is every time I've had a complaint or a gripe or a suggestion, they've largely implemented them. Over a year ago, I reviewed their new professional Alto made by the same factory, many of the same specs and features. I had a couple of gripes and complaints. They addressed those issues. So they're a company that I've enjoyed having a collaborative relationship with. Again, I did not purchase this instrument, but it also don't make any money if you buy one. So let's talk overview. What makes this a professional saxophone? Well, short answer, it's a difficult thing to answer as student saxophones keep getting more and more features. Perhaps their build quality is not improving, but the feature list on some student level saxophones are improving every year. But this does have the usual touches of a professional saxophone. It has a high F sharp key, um, lots of hand engraving, and interesting key touches that we'll touch on a little bit later. But what makes a professional saxophone a professional saxophone is largely in the way it plays, the way it feels and reacts to the player. And I can say it feels very good to play this. is very nice, very light, responsive, good snap back to the springs, but not too heavy. It feels very similar to a good Yamaha 62. Ergonomics, everything fits where you'd expect underneath the hands, nothing groundbreaking, no new ideas or positioning that I haven't seen before on other saxophones, but it feels very comfortable to play. The low end spatula we'll talk about in here in a second is especially good. One thing I'm not completely in love with is the front F key is a rounded pearl. I do quote marks, but my hands are currently occupied. I prefer the metal teardrop shape of the front F key, but it's not a deal breaker, not a big deal. What I especially like about this in terms of ergonomics is the build of the left hand pinky table. Feels very nice, feels like other great professional saxophones that I've played. One of the telltale signs of a well-made instrument is, can you roll around from low B to low B flat to C sharp? And it was really quite easy to do on this instrument. Now, I've not had my repair technician look at this. I've had no reason to. No leaks that I could detect as a player. And the low end, after six months of fairly regular playing, has remained responsive and quite free-blowing. So, so far, so good. One of the other things you'll notice about the way it plays is the ease of play. It does not have a lot of ribbing. There are some bolstered points where the um, posts touch the body of the instrument, but it doesn't have lots of long, heavy ribbing. There aren't the double arms on the low keys. It keeps it overall feeling quite light and quite responsive. So the tone quality is warm and free-blowing, but not bright by any stretch of the imagination. But it's also very easy to play. Some of the um, other big name pro saxophones, as they add features and strength and ribbing and arms, they become kind of like air vampires. You blow, and it just takes the air and sucks it right out of you. You blow more, and it takes a lot to get the horn to sing. 
and doesn't feel quite as responsive as some of the lighter horns. This feels very responsive, very easy to play, and the entire range of the instrument. <laughs> Overall, I liked the tone quality. Very pleasant, very easy to play, nice core sound. I don't tend to push the tenor too hard because I don't do rock and roll and R&B stuff, but uh, one of my compatriots, who we'll talk about in a second, who has played this extensively, found it very responsive and got plenty of volume on this. Overall, very nice to play. Not quite the clarity and projection of my Yamaha 62, but pretty darn close. Now let's talk build quality. None of this matters if it falls apart under a few hours of playing. I've played this, excuse me, it has been played by myself and one of my bandmates for about six months quite regularly. It's held up very well. I'm not surprised. It's made in the same factory by the same folks that made the Alto Pro model, the AS860, which I played for about a year solid and was very pleased with the way that held up. You can check out my review video of the one year follow-up. I'll link that below. This has been played extensively for about six months. The reason why? Uh, I was going into the recording studio with my band, The Sodonauts. I was playing the Jean-Paul AS860. For long story, it wasn't because I was being paid to do so. It just, I was in between horns and it played great. So this came in for review and I asked my partner in crime, uh, Christopher Peoples, I was like, hey, you want to try the tenor version? And he said, sure. And I said, how does it play? He said, great. And then I said, you want to play these together in the studio? He said, yeah, twinsies. And we did it because we're very mature like that. <laughs> So, a number of hours have been logged on this instrument. We've done several sessions since. It just plays great. He keeps asking to borrow it. I'm happy to let him because I primarily play alto these days in the recording studio. I feel very confident this is going to hold up like the Alto as well. My personal repair tech actually bought an Alto, the a used AS860. I talked about that in the review video, which actually brings up one pin. Put a pin, mental pin in something that we're going to talk about a little bit later on. What are the downsides of Jean-Paul? So my repair tech bought a used Alto, took it apart, took a look at it, and thought there's no real reason this should not hold up in the long term. The materials feel like quality, so I feel pretty darn confident at this point that the tenor is well made and will hold up over time. Ah, two other quick side notes. The key fitting, the key action is fairly tight, does not feel quite as refined as a new Yamaha or Yanagasawa. Given the price, we can't be terribly surprised at that. One of the interesting things uh, also is the heavy mass neck screw. There's two of them. Now, how does that affect the tone? I'm not touching that with a 10-foot pole, but what I will say is during assembly and disassembly, the tactile feel is quite nice. It is nice and easier to screw and unscrew. 
Repair techs that I trust will say they're not sure about heavy mass screws, but the fact that it's easier to tighten means you'll likely tighten the neck a little bit firmer, getting rid of some possible micro leaks. Maybe that's a benefit. Again, I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole, just relaying what repair techs have told me. I think it's a nice touch. I have no idea if it's going to make you sound better. Probably not. Aesthetics may be a bit of a mixed bag, but maybe a home run, depending on your preferences. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. What's also in the eye of the beholder is a petrifying gaze that could usurp your saving throw roll. If you understood what that meant, send me your lunch money because you're a huge nerd. Now, there is lots of engraving. There's the new 10 year anniversary lifeguard stand stamp, and there's also hand engraved orange blossoms all over. And I mean all over, it's on the bell, it's on the bow, it goes up the body tube, all the way up, lots of hand engraving. It's really quite beautiful. The lacquer, and this is the lacquered version, is a brassy yellow color. It's not the dark vintage lacquer, which I actually prefer a little bit brighter. I want my new horns to look new. Uh, it's not the most beautiful lacquer I've ever seen, but it's perfectly fine, and I greatly prefer it to the faux patina or faux vintage finishes that seem to be on a lot of professional instruments. I think this looks very nice. Now time to clutch your pearls, your pearl key touches, or not pearl, rather. Now, when I got this instrument, they told me it was black pearl key touches, when in fact, it's neither. They're not black and they're not pearl. They are actually a plastic and a deep blue sparkly thing. At first, I was really kind of unsure. They've grown on me a little bit and I keep going back and forth. At first I was kind of like, ha, ah. now I'm kind of like, huh? But I may get to, huh, I'm not there yet. My students, when I did a straw poll survey in one of my uh, studio gatherings, it's kind of a mixed review. Some people thought like, hey, cool. Others thought, no way. And others were like, eh, can't be bothered to care one way or the other. They just cared how it plays. I would personally prefer a non-plastic key touch. I know synthetic mother of pearl doesn't feel that much different than plastic. It's just one of those things on a professional instrument. I don't know. I haven't really decided how I feel about the key touches, but I don't have to tell you what you think because you'll certainly let me know in the comments below. What do you think of the blue sparkles? Love them, hate them? I don't know. Maybe they can change in the future. Maybe not. We'll find out. Now let's talk value for money. This is $1,000 less than a new Yamaha 62. And it should be because Yamahas are absolutely fantastic. And this is coming close to a lot of the features of Yamaha, but it's not a Yamaha. Largely, you'll notice that in the value when it comes to the, remember that pin we put in there? We'll talk about that in just one second. I think it's gonna hold up very well. The Alto has held up. This has been played for many hours. Nothing has fallen off or broken. And my repair tech said the metal feels perfectly fine. That soft Chinese metal that we keep hearing about has just not been an issue. Now there is one downside as far as value goes. Remember that pin we put in earlier when I was talking about my repair tech buy? Well, let me refresh your memory. My repair tech bought a used AS860. He bought it on eBay and paid about half the price of a new one. Now we're talking about a sample size of one. I just went on eBay before making this video. I did not find any used instruments, which is well, not any used Sean Paul 860s. Not surprising given how many they move versus Yamaha or Selmer and also how new they are. But I will say in general, newer brands like Jean Paul are not gonna hold the resale value anywhere near as well as a Yamaha or Selmer. That's to be expected. Same things go with wristwatches and automobiles, but it's just something to keep in mind. The value for money on this I think is great. It will not likely hold its resale value as well as the other big brands. Not surprising, but something to consider if you're looking at a birthday or a Christmas gift of a little one that may not be playing for a super long time. Okay, not a little one, but maybe a husband or brother. You know what I mean. Now, one thing I really do like about Jean Paul is their customer support. I haven't needed customer support. I deal with them in a much different way, obviously being a reviewer, but my students have had great experiences. As a matter of fact, interestingly, if you look at YouTube reviews, not only mine, but other channels, whenever you see the Jean Paul review, you'll see a lot of people commenting on how much they love and how happy they are with their Jean Pauls. My students have said very much the same things. And when there have been small issues, I've heard many, many reports of how good the customer service was. They got quick responses. They actually talked to humans and got their issues 
resolved. So yes, this is a saxophone manufactured in China, much like every electronic device we use. But it is an American company based in Miami. They stand by their product, they believe in their product, and you're gonna have a good customer service experience, which I can't say that for every brand I've dealt with. Now, I wanna know what you think. Have you played a Jean Paul? Have you owned a Jean Paul? Let me know in the comments below, and perhaps, most importantly, what do you think of the blue sparkly key touches? Let me know, and they would appreciate the feedback. They actually listen. I'll see you next week. Bring your horn. We're gonna do some playing together. Until then, go practice.